Hello, uh, today I'm going to be doing a tutorial on basic 3D animation. I'm going to be going through all of the steps that it has taken me a while to learn, all in this these videos. So, I'm using Cheetah 3D, which is an animation program. It, uh, it does cost $99, but I just use the demo version which basically gives you all the functionalities except saving which as long as you're willing to do a project like all at once and never close out the program it's fine so uh, I'm going to be doing Iceman today so first I'm going to import my model so here I have my Iceman folder and uh, this is my Iceman. I like to use OBJs personally. So uh, I open that up. And this isn't really an Iceman. This is more of just a basic human mesh. So I just use it because really Iceman is just a human that looks icy. So uh, now I'm going to put in a texture because really what pulls off the Iceman effect is the fact that he looks like he's made out of ice. So I'm going to go and I'm going to press import. Uh, now you can choose... Oh, sorry, 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 sorry. I messed up. My bad. You don't import textures. It's actually a very specific way. You have to go to... So make sure you are on the modeling, not the animation. Now go to materials, add material, go to special, and add a solid color. And in the solid color, if you're clicking on it, it will pull up this on here under the properties. And you want to go to emissive, and you want to press texture, this little box. And on this texture, it will pull up this little sidebar. And you can see from here, there are a lot of options to choose from. But for this purpose, we're going to use image. So now, it'll ask us to upload an image from the computer into this model or into this texture so that way we can put it on the model so now I can choose my Iceman texture of which I've designated uh, I found this you can personally use any uh, ice sort of but I found this one works best now see uh, if you look down here this texture now has the texture it has the image as its texture. So if we now drag it and we apply it here, you'll see this character turns white. So uh, that's just what happens whenever you put images in, since it can't render the actual thing until you put, go into the render. So uh, just to show you what that looks like, uh, if I press the render scene right now, this is what our Iceman looks like. Uh, it obviously you know, it isn't perfect, but this is about as good of an Iceman as I could figure out how to get. So, now, uh, once we have this Iceman, when it comes down to animating and rigging it, I find that it's best to click on the texture and take that tag and turn it to off. So now if you look, we've returned to this mesh color, and I personally prefer this because it makes it much easier to animate and much easier to see the character instead of when it's just pure white. Okay. Now we're going to rig the character so that way later on when we want to animate it we can control each one of its limbs instead of right now when we just control its whole body. So, for rigging we should first go, I suggest the front view. Sorry, I meant the right view and if you need to you can just move this camera off to the side because it doesn't really help so now we have this front view of the person which makes it much easier to uh to rig it so now we should go up to here on this tools go into tools character turn on the press joint tool so uh, joint tool basically uh, wherever you click it turns it into a movable joint so uh, for this I usually start down here then uh, then you just move your mouse up 
click around chest area, go to mid neck, and then go halfway through the head. And if you uh, if you need to, I would suggest setting the color to something more visible and making instead of a line a diamond. So uh, now that we have that, we can click out of this joint, go back to the first joint, or go back to the chest one. So if you see here under this joint menu, it'll tell you which one of your joints is. You can name them as you're going along, but I find it easier to name them all after they're done. So in this mid joint, this is the chest area. So hold shift and click on the, uh, on the shoulder of one of the arms. Then click on the uh, sort of the elbow. Then click on the wrist. Uh, now go back to the chest area, and you can do the same thing for the other arm. Hold shift, choose shoulder, let go of shift, choose elbow, and choose wrist. Now for legs, you have to go back to your original point, all the way down here. I'm going to close up all these because it's getting a bit messy. But So uh, you want to put it, you want to go back to this one, and the same thing. Hold shift, put it right up here, at the very top of the leg. Let go of shift, put knee, and then put, you know, sort of the ankle, and then put the tip of the toe. Now, uh, navigate yourself back to the... Uh, original point where you started your first leg uh, and hold shift put it right there at that leg let go of shift go to knee go to ankle and go to front of toe so now you've sort of put all your points so uh, at this point I would then suggest going back and naming all of these because it makes it much easier to navigate. And if you don't do it in more complex animations, it can become a hassle, I assure you. So this, this I would usually just, I would just name it Iceman, whatever, or whatever the character is named that you're attaching these joints to. Then uh, I would take joint one, and so joint one is our, so if we go into joint one, Joint one encompasses our arms and our uh, and our sort of head area. So I would name this one head. This one arm one. Arm two. And uh, if you really want to, you can always go down here and you know specifically say you know uh shoulder and all that uh i won't do that for time's sake right now uh i'll probably go back at the end and do it so uh here we have leg 1 and leg 2 so leg 1 leg 2 now i'm naming them by numbers uh you can always say right and left but Whenever you're animating and you're changing perspectives, you know, which one is left and which one is right is always going to be changing. So that's the only reason I don't do that. Um, let's see. Now, if you see right now at our rig, if we go back to our camera perspective, uh, you know, it looks like all the points are pretty much in place. But, uh, actually, the, uh, if you look at this rig, and so... Uh, it currently doesn't actually control the character because it's not attached to this model. So you have to go here to this little like skeleton guy, I guess, and go press skeleton while on the model. And under this, you'll see all these ID and joints. Now this looks very complex and all that, but what it actually is really just telling you is to take your Iceman, all of your joints, and to drag and drop. And now you'll see this happen. So this basically just shows you uh, where all of your 
joints are in position to the person's body. And uh, we'll go back to corrections later because those are always necessary. Now, uh, for the binding method, uh, I find that distance works best. Uh, I would keep these default, although depending on your models, you may have to change them. Press OK to bind the mesh, and you will see this sort of heat thing come up. Uh, all this means is that this just tells you how far each joint, how much of the body it controls. Now, uh, currently, if you go back to the model, and you now press up here to this arrows to get these arrows, it doesn't do anything. Now, that is just because now these joints control pretty much everything. So it's best to add on the joints to the model by dragging into the plus sign. Now, if you see this, it still does nothing. And that's because you're only on the arrows, but you actually have to go back to this. And then you'll see these blocks that allow you to like extend the model, which we won't be doing, but doing that does allow you to now move the model. So, all of the joints together are Iceman. But if we actually go down into the menu now, we can see that this joint controls the upper torso. So I'm going to name that upper body. Okay, now in upper body, we can just quickly move the camera around and test each point just to ensure that it controls what you think it controls. Because, you know, things get chaotic when you think you're controlling the arm, but you're actually controlling, you know, the head. Yes, this all looks this all looks pretty good. Let's see, shoulder. So this isn't actually the shoulder. So this is... So we would actually go back and rename this to be elbow. So then we can open up arm 2, rename this elbow. Uh, go back to this, and now if we look at this, this controls hand. So hand. And now, uh, now, we've, now we can assume from this that this is most likely the hand as you can see, because we laid them out in a pretty symmetrical format, so, and the legs are actually even easier, as you can see. Now, um, as you'll notice that this uh, model, when I imported it, it was already in this sort of T pose, I guess you could say. Um, and some models, you will notice, actually come in uh, this sort of stance, where their arms are at their, like, angled at their sides, instead of flat out. But, uh, and that, that, I haven't had great experiences with those kinds of models, because their dimensions are all, like, weird. So whenever I go to animate them, uh, I usually have more trouble. But, uh, other than that, I think both work fine. So here we can see that this is the knee. So uh, we'll name that knee. Sure, that's the leg. Yep. And underneath we have this, which is would be the ankle. Now, obviously, the ankle won't be moved as much as like the knee and the leg, but it's always, you know, the more points you can get in, the better because that just gives you a lot more options of movement when you go down to animate. And really, between the ankle and the foot, there's very little difference. I mean, maybe if you're doing, like, a dancing segment, or, like, someone was, like, tapping their toe to some music, I guess that's the only real reason I would ever have to use foot. But, um, other than that, it's just sort of there to, you know, have more options of movement again. Here we can see this is the knee, because even without moving it, if you just look where the point is, where it rests, most of the time, this will tell you. Now, if something's going quirky, the first thing I would tell you to do is go back to this menu and ensure that it's all correct, because that can really mess you up. Okay. 
So now we have rigged this character, and uh, now if we render it right now, you'll see that it no longer has this ice texture that we did. Uh, and the reason for that is because of that previous change we made, the tag on, tag off, because that actually controls not only if the it, not only if it's white in the actual animating area, but also if it can be seen in the render. So you always want to make sure that you're clicking on the texture, not the skeleton, the texture. Don't double click though. And make sure to have tag on whenever you're going to render. Because you don't want to render a whole animation and then find out, oh man, my texture is not there. Um, so if we go back and enter render now, yes, you can see that this is, this works now. So, um, that will conclude the uh, first part of our Iceman tutorial. Next, we'll be working on particles to make his ice blast. Until next time, uh, thank you for watching.